What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to another episode of the 12 Sprues of Christmas. We are on day number 10. Yes, I know it's after Christmas, but like I mentioned before, we're going to push through, finish off this series just through the whole month of December. So we are looking pretty decent there to finish by the end of the year. So let's go ahead and pull out our random box and see what we have in store for us today. Now, last episode, we built that SU-27. Actually, a really fun little kit. Not the most accurate, so I'm hoping we get something a little bit different out of this one here. So, fingers crossed, guys. I'm hoping it's going to be good. So, let's go ahead and pop in there, see what we've got. There we go. We've got the label. Let's pull that out. <laughs> okay. Is this Vezda? 1, 144 scale, lag 3. That's okay. I love the lag 3, so this should be kind of fun. I'm also building one with Joe, Mad Genius Productions. So, this is going to be a tiny version of that. Now, this will probably be very similar to the last Vezda kit we built, which was the IL-2. This is going to be along those same lines. This is made by Zvezda for their tabletop strategy game, but it still should look decent enough and it should appear to be a lag three. So I'm happy with that. Again, we've got our stand and our single sprue with all of our parts molded on both sides. So there's not a lot of assembly to do. Plastic looks a little bit interesting. I'll have to take a closer look at that in a bit. Here we have one of, I guess, the cards here for the lag three. These are like its stats or something. I'm not really sure what this all means. I've never looked into the game, but I've got one of the cards. So that's kind of neat. We have our decals with clear parts. Now, there are two canopies. I'm not sure really what the difference is. They look the same, and the decals look okay. Moving on to the instructions, of course, one page, three steps. So I'm not really worried about that. We don't even need them. And let's take a look at the plastic. Now, I mentioned the plastic looks a little bit strange. It's super glossy, and it's got kind of a rubbery texture to it. It doesn't feel like styrene that I'm used to with most kits. We've got the landing gears that we can tuck up inside. We're going to mount it onto that stand. Let's just go ahead and queue up that time lapse and just push through, guys, and let's get this thing all assembled. Let's do it. So working through this model kit, I've noticed that the plastic is not the traditional styrene plastic as I'm used to from other kits. This plastic feels different than even the IL-2. There's a bit of like a rubbery texture to it. It doesn't like to sand, and it doesn't really like to cooperate using the jeweler file. It's kind of hard to describe it. It just kind of moves the material, doesn't really take off the material. So I'm actually having to resort to using my hobby knife, almost carve it out and take off the ridges and the mold lines just with my hobby knife. I'm not really sure what kind of styrene this is, but it's definitely not what I'm used to. Now we are going to go ahead and use the other prop blur that we got from propblurs.com to kind of match along with the IO2. Those went on fine. There was no problem with that. 
I'm going to go ahead and paint those and I'm trying to work on a color scheme for this and I'm not really sure which one to do. The nice thing about the Lag 3 is there's a ton of different color schemes. This one here though is molded as a bit more of an early war lag. So I'm going to go back through my archives and my references and I'm going to look for early war lag paint schemes. Also it has to kind of fit with the tactical numbers that we have in the decal sheet. That's going to be a little bit of the caveat for that. But we're going to find something that should work pretty well. Then we're just going to go from there and paint it up and see what we can do. Now we do have to go ahead and prime everything. So that's going to be our next big step. We're going to take our Stalner Reds primer. I'm going to go over this and I'm going to prime it out because if I didn't prime this, I don't think the paint would stick to it. It's a very strange, very rubbery, very slippery plastic. And I'm not really sure that the paint would adhere to it unless of course you prime. So I'm definitely going to prime this one. Now we're going to go ahead and switch over to the clear parts. I'm going to go ahead and glue that down to the fuselage so I can mask it off. I'm not really concerned about any sort of interior because there is no interior in this model. We're just going to go ahead and queue up that time lapse and push through, finish off the rest of the sanding, get this glued down, and then we can get to priming. I will need to go ahead and mask off the canopy, but that should be pretty simple. I'm just going to go ahead and do my tried and true to me tape method, and we should be rocking and rolling. So let's carry on, get this thing finished up. All right, everybody, we are back, and I have finished my camo pattern here on our lag three. I decided to go for a really cool tiger stripe pattern from the 44 IAP. That's about 1941 around the Leningrad area. I've always liked to look at that. It's kind of wacky and cool for a lag three. So I decided to go ahead and do that. And luckily the numbers that we have here match up perfectly with the images I found online. So I think we're looking pretty decent. Now we're going to go ahead and just finish up the detail painting. Then we're going to overcoat everything with a gloss coat. Then we'll get onto the decals and we should be pretty much close to wrapping this thing up. These kits may be small, but they do build up pretty quickly. So let's finish it up.
All right, everybody, we are back, and I have a finished 1144 scale lag three by Zvezda. I want to go ahead and show you guys what we've come up with. And here it is. I got to tell you, this kit is very small, no detail, weird plastic, but I think it turned out all right. It looks pretty good for a tabletop wargaming figure, you know? So this is, again, a tiger-striped pattern, white 14 from the 44 IAP, Leningrad 1941. I just like the look of the camo, so I decided to run with it. I used Vallejo. I have a paint set for early war Russian aircraft. Now, I did add the photo etched prop blurs on this as well. They're a little bit wonky here because the spinner was not easy to go ahead and work with. For some reason, it was really just oddly shaped. But I tried to sand it down as much as I could before I went ahead and put on those blades, and I did the best I could. Honestly, it's a nice little kit for tabletop wargaming. It isn't really that fancy. There's no details whatsoever, no cockpit. There's nothing like that. It's a fun little model and one of my favorite Russian aircraft, so I'm happy with it. But anyway, guys, we are done with day 10. This is it. We're going to move on to day 11, and we're going to pull the next kit to see what else we have. So until next episode, everybody, thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you back here starting on Monday with episode number 11. We're getting down to the wire, guys. We're almost done. Until then, you know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool, and we'll see you back here in a couple of days for another episode of the 12 Spurs of Christmas. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye.